Welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Heather Isvron, and with me today is Dr. Dan Kanuski, Deputy Administrator for the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Heather. So today we want to talk a little bit about strategic goals for FEMA. I wondered if you could illuminate us. Sure. Well, after a busy disaster season with hurricanes and wildfires, mudslides, and all kinds of other smaller disasters, we decided that we need to start getting focused about what's next. And what's next for FEMA is going to be in our strategic plan. And in that strategic plan, we've set three big priorities that are some uh, a reflection of what we've been through this past year with the, with the hurricanes and, and all of the disasters. But it's also about where do we want to be four, five, six years from now. So number one, culture preparedness. This is hopefully a phrase that's not new to anybody in our community. It involves making sure that citizens know what to do during a crisis, that they realize that FEMA is not a first responder and that they themselves are going to have to take actions in the aftermath of a disaster. Two would be enhancing catastrophic readiness. So that's for FEMA. FEMA needs to be focused on the big disasters, the truly catastrophic ones, not all the disasters that can be effectively managed at the state and local level. And that's an acknowledgement, again, of these catastrophic uh, scenarios that we've seen. We expect those to, again, happen in the future, unfortunately, and we need to be prepared, we at FEMA, need to be prepared for those and empower the state and locals to handle those smaller disasters. Three, reducing the complexity of FEMA programs. The last thing we want is for a disaster survivor to have to navigate a labyrinth of disaster programs when they're trying to recover from potentially a, a, an event that's been truly catastrophic, a loss of home or, or even worse. So we want to be there for them. We want them to be able to understand and navigate our programs and the federal government's programs writ large. Mm. Well, maybe we could take each one in turn and dive mm -hmm. a little bit deeper. So mm -hmm. in, in the first one, having that um, culture of preparedness, can you um, tell me what that looks like from the individual standpoint? Yeah, some are practical skills like CPR or knowing to check on your neighbor following a disaster or turning off water and gas to, to your home or your neighbor's home. Those are simple steps that I think uh, make a big difference following a disaster. Now that's uh, something that's not new. It's something that's part of ready.gov and we're very proud that, that ready.gov has reached to so many millions of people and, and helped to provide those, those, that practical knowledge. But now let's think about a 2.0. Let's get that message out there. Let's make sure that, that those practical skills are not only uh, available, but teachable, mm -hmm. and that we get non-governmental organizations and community groups to embrace those and teach those skills. And then there's a second part of this for individuals that I think is maybe a little bit different than what we think of when we think of individual preparedness, and that's financial preparedness. Mm -hmm. Turns out many Americans can't put their hands on, let's say $500 that they might need immediately following a disaster. And that could be a house fire, it could be a tornado, or it could be a catastrophic hurricane. In any of those scenarios, you're gonna need some cash on hand to rapidly recover. Now, one of the ways that you can more rapidly recover than, than just having uh, an over-reliance, let's say on FEMA, uh, on our programs, which are not meant to make you whole. And what I mean by that is we provide a, a few hundred or a few thousand dollars immediately after disaster in those, those big disasters, not your, not your standard house fire, of course, where you still uh, obviously will need to uh, have your own cash on mm -hmm. hand. Uh, but those individuals who lack insurance, and this is, this is something we have to get past uh, as Americans, is Insurance shouldn't be viewed as optional. Insurance should be viewed by all of us as something, a necessary part of our individual preparedness. So making sure you have adequate insurance on your home, on your belongings, on your vehicle, that will help you recover. Mm -hmm. And quite simply, for the same reason we talk about FEMA not being a first responder during the disaster phase, FEMA is also not your, your go-to in the recovery phase. That should really be your insurer. Yeah, I think the, the average citizen really believes that FEMA is the everything, mm -hmm. right? Because it's such a brand, if mm -hmm. you will. And so changing that mindset, I think, takes some time. Absolutely, especially after this, uh, this year in disasters. Just think about the, the people that see on TV that FEMA is dispersing billions and billions of dollars to disaster survivors. And while that's true, and we absolutely are, we're helping those in need, it doesn't make you whole. 
Right. It's not going to, uh, FEMA assistance is never going to help to completely uh, rebuild your home or replace your belongings. It's, it's meant as a stopgap to provide you some, some time uh, to recover in the initial aftermath. But, but rebuilding, you need to be prepared either in savings or with insurance. And, and honestly, both of those are going to be necessary following a disaster. Mm. And so let's take those billions of dollars and you were talking about some, some disasters are smaller in nature and some are larger. And so this goes to number two of your strategic goals. Can you delve into that a little deeper? Absolutely, yeah. So we want to enhance catastrophic readiness. That's ensuring that FEMA's prepared to respond to those, those catastrophic disasters, which I'll define as disasters that are um, over a threshold. And that threshold that's been used by the, by, uh, the the Government uh, Accountability Office is $41 million. Mm -hmm. So a $41 million disaster is uh, something that accounts for about three quarters of the presidentially declared disasters in the U.S. Now we believe at FEMA that the states should be well positioned to manage those relatively small disasters and that FEMA should focus on those 25% of disasters that are beyond the $41 million. Now, that doesn't mean that FEMA is not going to fund a state's recovery. Nothing that I'm saying uh, impacts the, the Stafford Act, which funds states uh, that, that have uh, received a presidential disaster declaration. What it does mean, though, is that the states will be expected to manage their recovery for those small disasters. And saying it succinctly, it would be a federally supported, a state managed, and a locally executed uh, vision that we're going to be articulating as part of the strategic plan. So all these partners working so well together. Absolutely, and again, FEMA needs to be focused. If we've learned anything from this hurricane season, we need to be focused on directing our personnel to those areas where states are truly overwhelmed and desperately need our assistance. And that's what we'd like to focus our efforts, both training and exercising and working jointly with our partners to make sure that they know we're gonna be there for them for those truly catastrophic disasters. And for the smaller disasters, we're going to provide the funding and we're, going to, and we're going to provide training to make sure that they can do it. But we have confidence in those states that they can manage if, if we're supporting and the local governments are working in partnership. Excellent. And so number three. Yep. Reducing the complexity of FEMA programs. And one would hope this isn't something that we'd ever even have to have as a priority, right? That our programs would just be so seamless and so easy to, to access that we would never have to state that this is kind of de facto a problem. Now, I will say our IA program, our individual assistance program is pretty straightforward. It, it has improved dramatically over the years in the sense that it's available online at uh, disasterassistance.gov and there's a, an effort to unify those programs. However, we need to go further. Hmm. We need to make sure that not only are FEMA's recovery programs streamlined for the individual and disaster survivor, but also across the entire federal government. There are many departments and agencies that offer assistance to individuals, to businesses, and to governments immediately after a disaster. We want to make those as easy and as simple to access as possible. So 2017 was quite a year for natural disasters. Uh, can you give us some of your lessons learned? Indeed, it was a historic year. It was the costliest disaster season in U.S. history. And there were many lessons that we learned at FEMA uh, and many records that were set that we never frankly expected. Uh, things like the largest air and sea mission in FEMA history. That's to be expected when you have an island in need of assistance. And we had to ship, either by air or sea, uh, millions of meals and, and gallons of water and thousands of personnel and now supplies, everything from generators to power poles, many lessons on the logistics front. Mm. Uh, it's, it, so we're looking at other isolated areas, areas that might be like Puerto Rico, uh, where we need to make sure that we have the ability to deliver. Also, uh, I think that you'll see reflected just in general in our strategic plan, many of those lessons. I'd say all of our three strategic priorities link directly back to many of these lessons. And so whether it be uh, ensuring that we uh, have a culture of preparedness so that individual citizens realize that FEMA is not a first responder to enhancing catastrophic readiness, which means that we're going to be focused on those big disasters to reducing complexity to make sure that those disaster survivors can access our programs and federal government's programs following that disaster. All of those link back to those, those lessons. And we definitely want to embrace these lessons as lessons learned 
not just simply lessons observed. Thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely. Thanks, Heather.